What's up guys? Welcome to another one of my text game layer report breakdowns. This is the series where I show you exactly how I go from the opener to the date with everything in between. And this one's going to be particularly interesting because I'm going to show you a very simple, direct and straightforward style that you can use and also what to do in those situations where there's a language barrier and the chick doesn't really speak or understand English that well. Right, so let's just crack right into the screenshots. So this is Tinder, I open her with the infamous, hey trouble, and she says, hey. So this is a pretty you know, low investment text back, and there's two reasons why that might happen. First is that the chick is simply a time waster, in which case you want to kind of recognize that and screen her out. But the second category that I find guys almost always forget about is that she simply doesn't speak English well, and she just does not have the vocabulary to be you know, fun and flirty back. Right, so it's important to be able to recognize that and adjust your text game accordingly, which is what I'm gonna do in this situation. So I say, I like your style with one of these. And I find this is like a really good text in the beginning of the conversation. It's like a good compliment. It's not too, like, too much, like, oh my God, you're so gorgeous. And it's not too boring, like, oh, you're such a classy, perfect lady. It's that nice in between. And I find girls respond really well to it. She says, thank you. I say, are you from here originally? So this is another thing I'm doing to get the conversation going. Uh, I find this text works well because people enjoy talking about their roots. It's something that's unique to them. And then you can talk about your roots and kind of vibe over that. It says, no, I'm from Venezuela. And I say, my favorito. So here, I'm just making a joke. Uh, very simple, very basic humor. A mistake guys make you know, with foreign guys is they think that the same level of wit that they use on, you know, say, American girls, they should use on foreign girls, but actually it'll be way too much for them because they simply won't understand, you know, the complexities of what you're trying to say. So you wanna keep things very simple, very straightforward with foreign girls. She says, lol, really? I say, no lol, I have dated a few girls from there. So this is basically a nice DHV, display of higher value. What I'm saying is two things. First of all, that, you know, I get laid, I have experience with women, I'm not like some like lonely loser. But secondly, also is that I know your culture. I understand Venezuelan girls, I'm like kind of an insider. She says, so have they become your favorites? I say, not yet, but maybe you'll be the one to make that happen. So here, I'm kind of, going from general to specific, I'm kind of also another like fun and flirty text. I'm saying, hey, maybe you'll be the one that fucking, you know, really just makes me super attracted to you. And she says, well, I'm sure. I say, I like the confidence. Do you have WhatsApp? So you might be thinking like, wait, dude, you're moving this over text this fast. Like, don't you usually say that you should, you know, get her to agree to the general idea of meeting up with you, you know, soft close, hard close, and then move it to text? Generally, yes. But what I found with foreign girls is that they're much more likely to open up over WhatsApp than they are over Tinder or over any other dating app. With American girls, it doesn't matter as much, but I find that there's a big advantage that once you actually get the conversation going, like one screenshot, two screenshot, with girls who are from Eastern Europe or especially Latin America, just move it over to WhatsApp. They're just gonna be more likely to open up. You know, you can send them pictures, you can send voice memos, they can send you pictures, and it's just gonna increase the likelihood of you know her becoming invested. She says, yes, I do, which is a little bit of a frustrating answer because you know, I want her to just give me her number. So here I'm gonna go in a little bit of a different direction. I say, message me, and I give her my number. And I like to do that sometimes too because I know if a chick does not text me that she was gonna be likely a waste of time anyway. And if she does, then it's a nice little compliance, you know, uh, whatever, increase on her part, which is something that I want. So she texts me, hi Alex, I'm her name. I say, ah, my favorite Venezuelan girl. So I'm referencing, you know, the, the joke I had earlier. She says, lol, I have to tell you something. My English is not very good, lol. So this is kind of what I suspected from the start. The reason she was being very short with me wasn't because she was, you know, a time waster or just there for validation. She simply didn't speak English well. I say, that's okay. I can always seduce you with my gringo espanol. So I find that this line works quite well with uh, land women, they find it funny, they're like, haha, gringo espanol. It also shows that like, you speak a little bit of the language, which again, builds comfort you know, on the girl's part. She says, lol, excellent, where do you live? This is a great question because it's a buying question. So things like, do you live alone, where do you live, what time are you free, are buying questions. And when a girl asks you that, you know, it's a really good sign. I say, I'm in Brickell, she says, super. I say, you, she gives me her area. I say, perfect, we should get together sometime soon. So again, very simple, very straightforward, moving things forward in a progressive way, you know, kind of whatever, start off with the opener, a little bit of like get to know you stuff, then jokes and kind of like we frame, and now we're kind of uh, moving over to text, and then now kind of the soft close, right? I'm still gonna follow the rules with optimal closing. First soft close, 
then figure out her schedule, then the hard close. So I'm not gonna get lazy just because I'm at the finish line. She says, sure. I say, what's your schedule like? She says, I'm pretty busy. Let me check when I can. And then uh, I just don't text her back. So I give it you know, a little bit. I was gonna wait an hour or two. And then within 15 minutes, she you know, triple texts me and says, what day are you available? So this is good. This is a sign of investment. I say, how's tomorrow, Monday evening? She says, maybe Sunday. Okay, so it's not a super concrete text, but, uh, and also Sunday wasn't that great for me, but I just figured I could finish my work earlier and then just meet her later at night. So I say Sunday might work. It'll have to be at night though. She says, okay. And here I'm just gonna solidify the date. I say, do you like wine? She says, I do. So I'm taking right now the idea of the date from something that's general to something that's specific in her mind. I say, good, we can split a ball. She says, where? I say, my romantic balcony. She says, hmm. Do you live alone? So this is a great text, it's a buying question. I say yes, and I talked about this in my 17 most common concerns and objection videos. Whenever a girl asks you if you live alone, the right answer is always yes, always yes. And the funny part is that <laughs> usually my roommate's not around, but this time when she came over, my roommate was like right there, and it made a grand total of zero difference. You know, it's something girls wanna know before coming over to put themselves at ease, but once she gets here, and if you have a roommate, it really makes no difference. So she says, uh, the next day she texts me, Hi, Alex. I say, hola, Linda. And she sends me a smiley face. And you guys might be thinking like, well, you know, she seems kind of low investment. Maybe she's gonna be flaky. So while I can see how some people might think that, you have to look at other sides. The fact that she's been asking me buying questions. The fact that she's been complying with everything I've said. And also the fact that uh, she's the one that opened me that day. Again, this is the reason she's texting me in such a short way is simply because she doesn't know English that well. It has nothing to do with her interest level. I say, how's your day going? She says, very good, just working. And then I send her, this is like another, you know, I guess whatever, DHV text that I will use. I send her a picture of my tattoo, showing off my dog, and I say, me too. And then she says, will I see you today? Right, so again, she's the one that's confirming on me. Very solid text, it means it's very likely beyond. I say, yes, what time are you free tonight? She says, at 6 p.m. I say, I'll still be finishing up a bit of work. House nine, what about eight? So here we're just purely getting into logistics. I say, yes, that works. And then she texts me around uh, 7.30, says, hey. I say, hey, almost ready. I'm ready, send me the address. I give her my address. Uh, she says, are you there? I say, yes, I'm home. What time should I expect you? 30 minutes. The funny part is that <laughs> I initially suggested nine and she asked me if we could meet at eight and she winds up coming over shortly after nine. And this is something that I've just kind of gotten very much used to with Latin American culture. It's like, if you have plans at eight o'clock, you can expect to see the girl at nine, 9.30, sometimes maybe even 10. It's just something that at this point I've just gotten very used to and you can just adjust to. So then uh, she, uh, she says, okay, I'm down. I say, coming. It's one of my favorite texts to send when the girl is here. I spell it C-U-M. And then, uh, so she comes over and I, I'm gonna be honest, I got a tad bit nervous at first because she was honestly hotter than her pictures, but also she dressed up really nice. And usually girls don't do that when I invite them straight over, but she had a dress on, like fucking perfume, makeup, her tits fucking out and popping. I was like, oh damn, this chick is just fucking hot. And so I was wearing, you know, pretty much this outfit. So, okay, whatever, not a big deal. Lead her onto my romantic balcony. Uh, we have a drink or two. And then, you know, she was a little, it was a little difficult because again, she just didn't really speak English well. So the whole thing was just pretty much in my broken Spanish, which honestly sucks balls. But again, good principles of, you know, game apply. So pretty much just good eye contact, good body language, proximity, small steps forward, escalating, escalating. And then eventually she just got really horny after I did a few things and we wound up having a night of epic sex. So let's quickly recap what my text game was like here. Standard opener, then some basic banter, like I like your style, are you from here originally? Then a little bit of the we frame, and again, some very simple, basic humor, nothing that's you know, overly try hard or overly gamey. And then moving things over to WhatsApp, then you get some more basic banter, like how's your day going? Should I send her a picture of my dog? Then closing in an optimal way, which is soft closing, figuring out her schedule, then hard closing. Uh, then fortunately there was no objections or concerns. So that part, you know, I didn't have to do anything for. And then it was just confirmation and logistics. Super simple, super straightforward. Some guys watching this might be thinking like, wait, like what, like this was, why was this good text game? This was just like way too easy. Good text game should not be overly try hard, should not be overly complex. One of the biggest mistakes that I see, you know, in the Facebook groups is that guys are trying too hard to be overly witty, overly fancy, overly gamey. You know, J-Malf talks about this all the time. 
Simplicity, keep things extremely simple, extremely straightforward. Only add complexity when you need to. And this was a situation where complexity did not need to be added. Hopefully you guys found this video valuable. Show me some love by smashing the like button, hitting the subscribe button, click the bell for notifications. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Also make sure you follow our Instagram at RealPlayingFire. Always posting text game of the day, memes, and lots of other value. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time.